I special friends. Wow, these are unsettling times. Um, I know we've all had difficulty in our life, but I struggle to think of another time where everything about the future has just been as uncertain as it is now. But you know, in the Old Testament, there are many stories of God's divine deliverance in the midst of overwhelmingly uncertain times. And one of those stories is in 2 Chronicles 20. We read about King Jehoshaphat, and one day a messenger comes to him and tells him of this vast army that is marching against Jerusalem. Not only does this army vastly outnumber their own army, but it's right on the border of Judah. And the Bible tells us that Jehoshaphat is immediately filled with alarm. Now, that's a familiar feeling to us right now, isn't it? But he makes a decision right away that he will inquire of the Lord. And I believe that that decision is a key one for us to make as we seek to deal with these feelings of alarm in our own lives at this moment. It says in verse 3 that he calls together the people of Judah, men, women, and children, and they all come to Jerusalem to seek God and to fast and to pray. Um, we can't be physically together right now, but I believe that we can resolve in our hearts to join together as the children of God, to seek God in this time, to fast and to pray for his deliverance of our nation. And I love Je Jehoshaphat's honesty in that moment. He knows who God is. He says, God, you're mighty. I know that you have all power in your hand. But he says, God, we don't have the power to face this vast army. We don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. And as I think about this unseen sinister enemy that this virus is and just the uncertainty that is brought for the, the safety of my loved ones and just the uncertainty it brings about my own financial security for the future, I feel like I can say with Jehoshaphat, God, I feel powerless. I don't know what to do, but... My eyes are on you. And you know, God responds to his people coming to seek him. And he gives them a very clear word through a prophet that's there in his midst, in their midst. And listen to the just the encouraging words in verse 15. It says, do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Now, I would have been very comforted by those words. If I could have stayed back in Jerusalem and just relaxed and uh, ridden it out while God took care of the enemy. But God asks his people to do something that tests their, their faith. He says, I want you to march out against the enemy. I want you to prepare for and go to battle. Friends, it would be very easy for us to just stay in our homes, to while away the hours of lockdown in front of our TVs, binge watching movies, um, sitting on our devices and our computers. But I believe that God is calling us as his children, young and old alike, to show up for this battle. It's time for us to suit up and to step into the battle lines, just like he asked his people to face the enemy in those olden times. And you know, God has given us powerful weapons of warfare that can affect the heavenlies and influence what happens here on earth. Prayer, fasting, the declaration of his powerful word over our circumstances, and worship. And talking about worship, it's interesting to know that God's pattern for deliverance of the Israelites in that time started when they began to worship. Jehoshaphat appointed men to worship and praise God, and he put them at the head of the army, and they marched out towards the battlefield, praising God. And you know what they sang? They said, give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. And verse 22 tells us that as they began to sing and praise, God set ambushes against the enemy armies, and the enemy armies began to attack each other. So that when Joshua Fett and his army got to the battle line, there was not one single enemy soldier left alive. All that they had to do was to gather up the plunder. And there was so much of it, it took them three days. 
our nation has been broken and divided for so long, friends. And I believe that God can use this overwhelming situation for the display of his mighty deliverance and to bring good for our people. As today is our first day of nationwide lock a nationwide lockdown, I want you to join me in showing up for this battle. We need to suit up with the powerful weapons that God has given us. Prayer and fasting, praise and worship, the declaration of his powerful word. I want us to begin to pray for the stop of this virus as it spreads across our nation. I want us to pray for the healing of those who are sick. I want us to pray for our doctors and our nurses and our security and our um, law enforcement as they stand in the front lines. Let us pray for our president and for our leaders, for the big decisions they have to make, for unity there, for no personal agendas, just the good of our nation, and to pray against lawlessness and evil. And let's pray for God's divine provision for his children not just for those of us who have means, but for those of us who live in our communities that already live below the bread line. And let's pray for opportunities for the gospel of peace to be shared with those who don't know God. It's a privilege to march out with you, KCI. We love you. God's got this, but let's suit up for this battle.